Well, for more on those overseas markets, let's head to the London Stock Exchange and talk to Ashraf Lady. He's Chief Executive Officer of Intermarket Strategy. Ashraf, thanks for being here. I know you, you've had plenty to say recently about the Volkswagen scandal. It uh, reaches perhaps ahead today, in a sense, when the Chief Executive Officer perhaps pleads for his job in front of the Board of Directors. How much of a chill is this casting over European equity markets generally? A big deal, Paul. Every portfolio manager who has a piece of, of, of the European market, whatever class of shares, owns, owns Volkswagen. It's the uh, second largest the car company in the world, and, uh, and it's very stable, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and basically, yes, it, it's going to have an impact on the benchmarks. Uh, we're not sure to what extent, you know, is this going to be LIBOR on, on wheels? Um, you know, probably uh, the public uh, hatred, let's say, you know, that we've seen for banks may not be seen towards the auto manufacturers. Nobody was killed, even though some people may argue the long-term impact of this, you know, maybe otherwise and so on and so forth. But the fact that uh, whether it was Enron in 2001, waste management in 1998, uh, WorldCom, when you have a scandal from a big company that is happening at the same time with a world the slowdown or rising volatility, uh, some, some questions will be asked. Will this affect uh, the sector in a long-term way? Uh, the, of course, the banks were affected in a big way uh, by their scandals. Will this affect the automakers in the, in the midterm, the share prices of the automakers? Oh, well, only if there is, you know, only if this is going to be the beginning of similar uh, scandals, which probably I would not think so. You know, you know, the worrying thing in the U.S., for instance, auto stocks were doing very well. This is not my specialty shares, but auto stocks are doing very well, and they're doing well because, you know, oil was, was, was cheap. People were buying cars and, and so on and so forth, and there was the consumption apart from, from the pharma. Autos were doing well. The problem now with that, with large auto companies that are already uh, uh, hurting from slowing demand from China. When you add this, this is really going to be among the uh, uh, other array of uh, factors that will lead to something that you and I have been banging on the table on this show: that a central bank somewhere in the United States is not going to be raising interest rates. We banged on the table uh, two weeks before the meeting, four weeks before the meeting, six months before the meeting, and we still think it is not going to happen. And I did not even mention the word China yet, <laughs> or maybe I did. So Ashraf, switching gears, looking at the European economy, we know that the QE program that was implemented by the ECB will probably be in place well beyond September 2016. What's your take on the PMI numbers? How do you think economic growth is going to unfold during the next couple of years? Yeah, I think it's a big difference to say, which, which you said right, to, uh, to extend QE beyond September next year and to add on to, key, uh, to QE, what the Japanese did last year. I don't think they're going to do that. Let's not forget the opposition in the, inside the ECB to start the QE. So, yeah, I think there is a possibility to probably extend QE uh, beyond, uh, beyond September next year, but it's a bit too early. And Draghi is going to remind us that he has done the downgrade for CPI and so on and so forth, but it's probably, you know, he's going, to, he's going to open the door towards extending that, but he's not going to take any action anytime soon, and, uh, and that will not help uh, uh, the euro uh, to gain above 117, but it will not drag the euro against the dollar uh, far beyond these levels, because there is still more fat, more Fed hike fat to be, to be removed from the U.S. dollar. You've also been watching margin debt uh, around uh, world stock markets. You think that, that uh, margin debt, you, you see margin debt coming down and you see that as a sign of market jitters. Can you flesh that out for us? Yes, the correlation between a rising stock market and margin debt should, looks at the speculative activity or factors going into the market. But then when you have the VIX rising, when you have China raising uh, the important the questions when you have a slowdown in and outside the United States and so on and so forth. Each time you have a drop like we had the two weeks time or a th a three weeks ago, uh, the process when you buy something on margin, when that thing that you buy goes down by 5%, what you're losing is not 5%, is more. So the process of the margin call and the self 
for falling process will lead to a speedy decline in the market. We've seen this in 1998. We've seen we've, we've seen this in March 2000. We've seen this uh, 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 three months before October 2007, and we saw it uh, three months before the peak. Ashraf, thanks mm -hmm. a great deal. Always good to talk this to you. Peak. That's Ashraf Lady, Chief Executive Officer of Intermarket Strategy, joining us from London.